but this podcast is going to be about opening. There were some specific things that you guys asked about that I cover in this, and then there's also really the basics that I cover that I just kind of break down because so many guys have uh, such either a, a, a faulty understanding of this topic or just never even learned it or anything. When I say faulty, I mean a lot of guys think they know it, but they don't. And actually, you know what? I'll, I'll give you right now the example of the the way I I'm I figured out I was shocked at how many people don't actually know the difference with the openers and how they should work and stuff. And I've never heard anyone else really explain it in a way that that codified it that made sense to me. And so I broke things down, and this is the way that I just figured them out for myself. <clears throat> and then years later. When I was teaching, teaching professionally, uh, I got a lot of good feedback from this. And it's interesting because, like, when you have an idea that's on your own, uh, you don't think it's that good because it's your own idea. And it took multiple people, like, years of basically validating it before I was like, oh, maybe there's something special here. But big part of opening, there's the, always the arguments of what's better, direct versus indirect. And I remember when I first read about that in the game. And guys would get in debates about it. And this guy does this and this guy does that. I, I guess it's my martial arts training and my background that I just was like, why does it have to be one or the other? It should be like an MMA version. It should be like a, I like a Jeet Kune Do way. Like the, that was kind of the original MMA, like my personal expression of the art. Because I could train in a martial arts school with another guy and him and I can both train there literally with the same people for the same amount of time. And our styles, our personal expression will be totally different because of the way we move, because of what we've previously done, um, because of what feels congruent and comfortable and our attributes. So that's kind of the way I just thought about it. But anyways, the direct versus indirect, I remember uh, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, well, five, six years ago now, I was at a seminar. And this wasn't one of the big fancy ones I usually go to. This was one that was kind of like in a in a smaller place out in L.A. and some of the Casanova crew guys, but I really like them. Um, a lot of the guys I knew, they were good guys. And so I was happy to go speak at these events that were a little bit smaller and stuff and and help, help them out just because I saw what they were doing. I saw what they were about. So anyways, the uh, one of the speakers they had, and I'm not going to say who, but afterwards, he was talking to me. We were kind of just hanging out. And he goes, hey, uh, hey, bravo. He's like, I, I see what you're doing. Like, you went solo and you've made it. Like, I want to do this. I want to do this as a job. Like, I want to do this as a career. How do I do it? Can you give me any advice? And anytime anyone asks me a question like that, where they... I don't know if you guys can hear the train going by, too. Um, anytime anyone asks me a question like that, I always ask them twice. If I'm going to tell them something, I think might hurt their feelings so i go well do you do you want me to tell you the truth do you really want an answer to that and they go yes and i go are you sure because you might not like it or i'll say something to that extent and they say yes and after i get two confirmations i go for it so when he asked me about that he's like yeah i just can't seem to make it like what what can i i need i need tips i need advice what can i do better and i go well do you want me to tell you the truth he goes yeah i go okay do you want me to tell you what you're what you might not like it, but do you really want me to tell you what you need to hear? And he goes, yeah. And I go, okay, bottom line is you're not good enough. And that's kind of the, a big problem with most of the coaches is they're just not walking the walk. They weren't good enough, and then they try to get right into teaching. Same thing with martial arts, same thing with everything. All these fitness coaches and life coaches and people who aren't living a life that's worth sharing and teaching about. Like that, That's something that was always so important to me. I never wanted to get into teaching. I just wanted to level up. I just wanted to get over my ex-wife and the divorce. Anyways, I go, hey, uh, you're not good enough. I, I don't think you're you're good enough to be teaching. And he kind of had this shock look on his face. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, well, here's a question for you. Because I heard what he was saying on stage. He was talking about opening. And he was talking about going direct. And I go, well, what's the difference between direct and indirect? And I ask students this all the time, but I specifically ask people when I hear them rip on one and, not, and, and, and say they're a fan of the other and the other one sucks. So I go, what's the difference? And he goes, well, going direct is being a man. It's going up there and, 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 and showing her you're, you're a man and you, you're using your balls and you're, you're, show, you're, you're showing her you're not scared. But going indirect, that's like 
That's like the weak way of doing it. That's like the 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 wussy way of doing it. And I was like, well, that's not really accurate. And I go, but like define them. What is going direct? What is going indirect? And every time I ask people that, I've had two people get close, but I've never had anyone ever be able to answer that. They'll always give me examples, but they never define it. So if you think about it logically, going direct is when you convey interest first. So obviously you're, you're into the girl or you wouldn't be talking to her. So I walk up to her. I go, hey, wow, you are so fucking beautiful. Or you're, wow, you're amazing. Whatever you want to say. Some statement of intent. Oh, my God, you're so fucking sexy. I had to come over here and say hi. And, and one of the ones I like saying, you guys can use this if you want, is, well, holy shit, you're fucking sexy. I had to come over here and say hi. I, want, I need to get to know you and, and hopefully find out you're half as cool as I hope you are. I'll say something like that at the end because it's a little, a little off the wall. And then I put my hand out and go, I'm Steven, what's your name? And now I'm introducing myself. I'm not creepy. I'm putting my hand out there. I'm being polite. They usually shake back. That's a good sign. But going direct is you conveying interest first. So going indirect is trying to get the woman to convey interest first, which if you really get into it, the deep like mystery method stuff uh, and style stuff, you would open, transition, and, and, and work your material and you wait for three IOIs, indicators of interest, before you give her IOIs. So I remember reading that years ago on one of those um, sales pages. It said, never get rejected by women again. And if you go indirect, that's correct. You won't be rejected because you never put it out there to get rejected until you know it's a slam dunk, until you know it's a home run. So going direct and indirect, that's the big difference is indirect. I'm already interested in her. Like I said earlier, I wouldn't be talking to her otherwise if I wasn't, but going indirect is just giving her a chance to get to know me more. The way I like explaining it is going up to her, asking her a question or talking to her, treating her like a human being weird. I know. And actually giving her an opportunity to get to know you a little bit more. Cause when you go direct, you're forcing her to go, instantly am i cool with this guy hitting on me or not and she could be in a bad headspace she could be busy she could be doing something else she could be walking down the sidewalk or go leaving the coffee shop and going to work she could be running late something all these things could be going on and you walk up to her and you're like hey i want to hit on you blah 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 and she's like uh no and a lot of times that's too much it's too much energy it's too much pressure And so I saw that firsthand once with a girl. Actually, when you guys go to the website, that 30-minute audio interview, that girl was this real, real attractive, very petite Asian girl who came out to visit me in L.A. We were at the bar, her and her friend and I. She was talking to me about how she couldn't find a nice guy. She's like, I I need help. I can't find a nice guy. This has been a couple years after we dated. And as we're talking about this, I'm ordering another round of drinks, and a guy walks up to her. And he's like, hey, I, you're really pretty. I had to come over here and say hi. And she grabs me by the arm and she goes, oh, thanks. Or he goes, oh, can I buy you a drink? She goes, oh, thanks. I'm here with my boyfriend. And the guy looks at both of us. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit on her. I, I didn't think you guys were together. My apologies. And he leaves. And I'm like, no, no sweat. And he leaves. And I look at her. I go, what are you doing? You were just telling me a second ago you can't meet a nice guy. You're, you're dying to meet a nice guy. And he just came over here and he looked like a nice guy. She goes, no, he was trying to get me drunk. I don't like that. So... It's a weird thing. Like, you could you could be literally wanting seconds before she could be wanting to meet a guy, but all of a sudden, boom! You you go into that that character mode of all these other guys who've acted douchey or whatever, and because she doesn't know anything about you, she has to make assumptions about you. What is this guy doing? What is he saying? How does he look? How does he dress? What's his body language saying? Is he coming off as congruent? or incongruent, which is usually what I, I refer to as, as guys who are creepy. It's because somehow they're incongruent with something. But she, like I said, a second before, she was like, I want a nice guy. Nice guy comes up, no. So he was too direct. Now, a lot of times, though, you need to go direct, especially when there's a time crunch or when you convey a lot of instant value, which I'm not a bad-looking guy, and I'm pretty, pretty confident in my energy. So I love going direct. But also, 
when I, the, the story I always use the example is when I first moved to LA and I was in the Target store and I was looking around for um, shower curtains. I had never bought a shower curtain before. Every I don't know if it's an Arizona thing, but every shower I've always had was either a walk-in shower or it had a sliding door. So I'm in the in the the bathroom section, and smoking hot college girls there with her mom, and I'm walking up and down the aisle looking at the curtains. I don't know what to get. So I asked the hot girl, I go, hey, real quick, can I borrow your mom for a mom question? She starts laughing. She goes, yeah, sure. I go, hey, mom, I need help with shower curtains. And I said exactly what I just said about Arizona. I go, I've never, I go, I've never bought a shower curtain. Not that I'm like never bought anything, but just I'm from Arizona. We don't apparently we don't do them there. So what do I need to get? She goes, oh, you need to get a liner. You need to get a curtain. You need to get a hook. Do you need a rod? I go, no, no, the rod's already there. Okay. So she points out the things, the decorative ones, blah, blah, blah. We start chit-chatting a little bit. And as we're talking, I'm throwing out some cool stuff about how I just moved there, what's going on. Well, the daughter's right there. So I'm talking to both of them now. Anyways, after a few minutes, and I've been able to demonstrate some more about myself, I've been able to convey energy stories all that stuff basically dhv i then asked the mom basically the same question i asked the daughter i go hey thanks for the help mom but you know what real quick i was wondering if i could if i could borrow your daughter for a second because i have a question for her and she and the mom goes yeah sure. what is it and i go well i want to find out if she's single and if she is i'm gonna hit on her and she, the mom just starts laughing and she's like oh you're oh you're such a nice guy oh go for it walks over to the other aisle the girl's laughing and yep we ended up uh having a great little interaction so what I always tell people is direct or indirect, the right move at the right time. Anyways, back to the definition, direct, I'm conveying interest first. Indirect, I get her to convey interest first. And that's what happened with the target girl. There was some more to it. I don't want to go too much into that story. But there was a couple little things going on. Anyways, when I'm talking to that coach, he didn't know the difference. I explained that. And it clicks in his head. He's like, oh, that's really good. And I go, yeah, I go, that's the thing. I go, you're not qualified to teach yet because like, you don't, you're up there ragging on indirect and saying how direct is the way to go, but you don't even understand something enough to dismiss it. So anyways, I think he actually kind of got out of teaching and stuff then, which sucked because I actually think he had potential and I was trying to help him uh, level up, but that's another story. So let's get into some of the other things about opening so that way you guys can can go out and start putting this into action so indirect versus direct that is like i said the right move at the right time is what i like doing the other thing with direct is it's it's very fast so the guys who have approach anxiety if i I give them a homework assignment of hey go out and do 20 approaches this week and um give 20 statements of intent like i can go out direct and do 20 and like 10 minutes now if the interactions go well it might take me longer but if i just need it open boom 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 if someone told me i'm gonna give you a hundred dollars for every time you go out in cold approach i could get that done very quickly i get 20 done very quickly when you go indirect it takes more time but like i said earlier indirect gives you the the opportunity to convey more about who you are so she can make a, a better more highly educated decision on whether you're worth her time or not. That's all it comes down to. So, indirect with a lot of girls when I meet them, where I know that I'm not their their typical guy that they go for, because uh, maybe I'm not the big crazy club guy, or I was at a goth club once and had a hit on a girl there. It was smoking hot, and I made a joke about, I go, oh my God, you're wearing like this, it was this vinyl nurse outfit. And I was like, and I, I did this on camera later with a girl in a cheetah skin dress or a leopard dress. But I was like, oh my God, I almost wore the exact same thing tonight. And I used a little cocky, funny line. And then because of that, I now opened. Because remember, all an opener needs to do is open. I, I've opened with a wink. I've opened with a smile. It could be anything. But the opener opened. Then we got some time to actually, I, I, normal talk, we just call it bullshit. We just be bullshitting and talking, getting to know each other, some small talk. And I always use like the small talk to lead to real talk or that, that, that real fluff talk to get deeper. I always try to get deeper with everything. Mindset, always try to get deeper. I'm not just doing interview questions. What do you do for work? Or how long have you lived here? Always ask deeper when they tell you about, some girl tells me she's like a nurse. I'm like, wow, that's so awesome. Like I think nurses are amazing. Like I could never do that job. 
what made you want to do that? Is that something you always wanted to do when you were, since you were young? Or did like something specifically happen to you or like someone in your family that made you want to become a nurse? And then boom, she'll tell me the whole story. And I found that out because I met lots of nurses and they would all tell me the set, those two stories. It was either they always wanted to do it or mom was in the hospital or dad was in the hospital or something like that. And they had such a positive impact and experience with a nurse that they're like, that's what I want to do with my life. Now, that's obviously a lot more, a conversation of a lot more substance than just, oh, well, so how long have you lived here? Oh, okay, that's cool. So, anyways. Improv. The way to think about it, these are my notes right here that I have. These are literally the notes I use during one-on-ones that almost every every guy gets. So like I said at the beginning, this could be something I'm going to refer a lot of people to. So improv. I love improv. I love I think I'm I think I'm pretty funny. I've been told that and I get a lot of positive reactions from the stuff I come up with. I get a lot of negative reactions too, but to me a lot of times that's that's pretty funny and enjoyable also. But the first time that you use an opener, it's improv. It just came to you. You just threw it out there. Um, me making a joke about, oh my God, I almost wore the exact same thing tonight. That I was in a in the goth club, totally not dressed like anyone like that, like just a normal button up shirt and jeans. And my wingman wanted to pop in there one night to check it out. And people are in there in like priest outfits and nuns and latex nurses and stuff. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to throw, throw something out there to kind of point out the absurdity of how I'm dressed compared to these people. It worked, so I use it. Another one I came up with, uh, one time I was in the mall, and this is the mall that I actually do one-on-ones with here, but I was there shopping, and I was walking through the mall, and it's kind of like some wood flooring kind of thing by the um, by the escalators and the exit, and if there's a female walking behind me with high heels, like I can hear her walking, like, like her shoes popping on the ground, and I was walking to the escalator, and I, I hear it, and I kind of turn around and look, and she notices that I turned around and looked because it's pretty loud. And then I look, I keep walking forward and then it's getting louder. Cause I think I was, we were slowing down a little bit cause of people. So she's getting up closer behind me and I turned around again. And before I could even say anything, she's like, no, I'm not following you. I'm so sorry. My shoes are just really loud. Ha ha ha. And so she actually had to make a joke to break the tension. So just by me looking twice, I was able to get an open. Well, that worked pretty well. So the next time I was in the mall, same thing, girl walking behind me, same area. I turn, look over my shoulder, and I always do it on the second time. I look, and I go, are you following me? And I kind of say it kind of serious like that. And again, I'm not telling everyone this is a great opener for, for you and your energy, but I can pull it off. And I go, are you following me? And the first time, the girl's like, no, no, my shoes are just really loud. I'm so sorry. And she laughs to break the tension and, and, and giggle about it. And then she's obviously having fun. Boom. Go for it. Now, I've used that multiple times since then. And 80% of the time, it gets a positive reaction. 20% of the time, I think they get really creeped out. Because I go, are you following me? And they're like, no, why would I follow you? I don't know you. And they get really weirded out. So, again, not say it's the best opener. It's just amusing to me. But what it is, is the first time you use it, it's improv. And then afterwards, if you want to keep using it, it becomes canned. So it's just like any comedian. Like a comedian who goes out, there's Jerry Seinfeld, Louis C.K., whoever, they go, Chris Rock, they do their sets, and they basically go across the country polishing up their material. So they've already worked on it for a while, but then they start doing their tour, and they, they polish it up, and then they usually film like the last one or two. They film it, and that becomes their comedy special for TV because they've had all that time to polish it up. And that's not like a negative thing. That's not a bad thing. But certain comedians would say like, oh, Hey, Chris Rock, he's like a millionaire. Jerry Seinfeld's hundreds of millions. They're the best comedians. But Jerry Seinfeld might say, oh, no, uh, uh, what's the guy's name from, from whose line it isn't anyways? Um, Wayne Brady and those kind of guys. They might be funnier because they're improv comedians. And Jerry and those guys are like, yeah, I can't do what they do. That's like unbelievable. They can come up with super funny stuff right off the fly. But Jerry comes up with epic funny stuff, but he has all the time. So it's kind of like what's what's better, being a, uh, a speed chess player or and like the world champion or a world champion like slow game chess player. It's There's pros and cons to both. But anyways, 
after I use something, do something the first time, improv. If it, re, if I, if I think there's something there, even if it didn't work too well, if I just think there's something there that I can work with, I'll put it in my back poli- pocket and I'll polish it up later and work it. Um, but anyways, that's uh, that's. I like coming up with ones that way. It's improv. I'm throwing shit against the wall, seeing what sticks. So then the the uh, and I then they become canned material. Well, if it's canned, also like if I put it on the on on the internet or someone else did, like the Five Oceans, or the Facebook Stalker opener. Well, then you could just copy someone else's canned material. And that's an interesting thing, too, especially for homework and for students. Because, like, the Five Oceans opener, I know it works so well that if I give it to students and they go out and can't make it work, it it proves to me, especially long-distance training, like phone coaching, it proves to me that it's not the material that's the problem. It's the delivery. Again, just like a comedian or, let's say, like an actor. You're reading the same script as Jean-Luc Picard, as uh, Patrick Stewart, playing Jean-Luc Picard, but you read the lines and you suck at it, he reads the lines and he gets on Star Trek. So it's the same material. It's all about how you deliver it. And obviously certain material is better for different people and you got to figure that out. But Five Oceans, and, and when I give it to guys and, and have them, and I send it to them in, in text form or have them ri- I write it down and then have them read it, it's really interesting seeing how they deliver it. So I'll, I'll demo it right now for you guys. This is the way I teach the students and the way I demo it. Uh, and you can also notice, I just wrote this on the blog post yesterday, um, so it should be right below this, but word for word, I'm going to break this all down in a, in a minute, but you'll see like how, how much practice I have with it. So anyways, I go up to a group of people and I go, hey guys, real quick, I need your help to win a bar bet with my friend over there. Can you guys name all the five oceans off the top of your head? And see how that sounds totally, like, I don't want to say believable, but it doesn't sound forced. It sounds like I'm really asking a question. That's that's really the important part with an opener, but we'll get more into that uh, more into that in a second. So, canned opener. That's a canned opener right there. You can start using it. It's a canned opener for you. Um, now, also, there's ones that are uh, situational, but that can be either or. That can be improv or canned, like the the high heels one, the girl walking on the wood. So those are certain certain um, openers I use in certain situations like um subway or chipotle if there's a hot girl behind me i'll 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 usually when we get up to order right before i go to order i'll turn and look at her and i go don't copy me and then i boom order so that way i'm already i'm already i'm giving her that energy and i'm pulling away and going back to the to the person making my food so before she can even respond i've already disengaged so that way if she starts to respond negatively it doesn't matter i'm already out of there and if she responds positively, well, then I'll have to disengage to re-engage with her, which is goes into the principle I teach called throwing and going, which is something I love doing. I just throw things out there, and if there's positive, I go back to it. If there's negative, I'm already gone. So I'll do that. And that's the first time came to me at Subway. Hot girl behind me. I saw a well, quick little story about that. Hot girl comes walk, hot, smoking, hot Asian girl when I lived in L.A. Comes walking in. I'm uh, And I was right on the edge of Koreatown. And so I'm like just woken up. My hair's all messed up. Didn't even brush my teeth. She walks in. I see all these guys check her out. She gets behind me in line. And I'm like, all right, I got to show these fools what's up. And so there was a little uh, sticker on the side over by the bread that said like, follow us on Twitter. Subway, SoCal. I think there was a number behind it. But it was basically just a sticker telling us to follow Subway on Twitter. So we're getting ready to order, and I just turn over my shoulder, and I'd used this once before on another girl, but this one was smoking. And I, I lean over my shoulder, and I'm like, hey, uh, real quick, are you on Twitter? And she goes, and, and the time I used it before, the girl just instantly opened up with Twitter. I didn't even get to the joke yet. But I was like, all right, that sticker's there. I'm going to use this line again. I don't know what to say. Boom, okay. Improv, I used it before. Now it's canned and situational. Let's go. Hey, real quick, are you on Twitter? And she goes, um, yeah, why? And I go, well, I don't know about you, but as soon as I get home, I lean over and tap on the sticker. I go, as soon as I get home, I'm going to follow this Subway store because of this sticker. And she looks at it for a second and looks at me and she goes, why would anyone want to follow the Subway store? 
And I go, not only just Subway, but like this Subway store in particular, like who, what are they tweeting? Like, oh, hey, Rick just got done making some bread or, hey, just cleaned up the bathroom all clean again. And so she giggles and I'm like, okay, now I got something to work with. Then I get ready to, to do my order. I go, hey, don't copy me. And then the hilarious thing was I, I, I order the bread, I order the whatever, the, the, the lettuce, or I did spinach on it instead of lettuce. So like five things in a row, as she gets up to order, all of hers are the same. And so the first one, I, I look over my to my left because that's the way the line goes. I look over my left and I, I'm like, oh, what? You're ordering honey oat bread? And then she goes, um, spinach instead of lettuce. And I look at her again and I get like, I act out like I'm shocked. And then she was like, two more, and I, two more things. And I go, what are you doing? I, I told you not to copy me. She goes, I'm not copying you. You're copying me. And I go, I'm in front of you. How can I copy you? Anyways, we finally get up to the meat section and then it's something different. Or maybe it was the sauce. I forget. I've been to Subway in years. And I, uh, it's the sauce section. So it's something different. And I go, oh, okay. Phew. Good. I was getting kind of creeped out. And she starts laughing. Anyways, we're getting ready to pay. And I go, hey, uh, I'm going to go get my soda real quick. But you seem really cool. We've got to figure out a way to keep this going. Um, so here, let, and I knew there was going to be an interrupt. I knew they were going to make her pay in a second. So I go, here, you go, you hurry up and pay, um, or I'm going to hurry up and go get a soda. You pay and then meet me over there and I'll get your number. And she goes, okay. And then boom, go over there, get the drink. She pays. She walks over. I pull my phone out, gives me a number. I save it. I give her a hug. She walks out. We do a little more small talk. Not important. She walks out. I put a lid on my uh, soda. I go to grab some napkins. I turn and there's like eight guys all just staring at me in there. And like I told you before, I, I, I hit on her just to show off in front of them. So it totally worked. But I end up shrugging my shoulders, kind of doing the Bravo pose. And I walk out and I just felt, it felt like a million bucks. It's pretty awesome. So Right there, improv, then it becomes canned, and now it's situational. So that opener works like in Chipotle at this barbecue place here in Phoenix, or I guess technically in Gilbert, Joe's Barbecue, and like at uh, Subway, those kind of places. There's, there's like a cafeteria line. Otherwise, I couldn't use it. So that's something to think about, like little openers, little routines that you can have there. And then um, lastly, there's ones that are also just spontaneous, something that just comes to you. Someone, a waitress messes, well, I shouldn't say a waitress because a waitress is technically not a cold open. Um, just something happens, like just in the environment. We were out at a bar once and a transformer exploded down the street and the power went out. And then I turn over to some girls. I'm like, oh, perfect. Now it's going to be romantic. And they start laughing and then boom, I, I started talking to them. But like that's such a spontaneous situation. And then I, it's also improv. So see how they're all kind of connected? So they all kind of layer on top of each other. So anyways, one other thing about openers is, again, like I said, openers open the set. It's got to be something right after to, to carry it through. And a lot of this stuff, I mean, to me, I don't know if you guys are, um, how, how, how advanced you are if you're listening to this, but like when I was first starting out, that, those nights that were, that were scary, that I was nervous about, that I would go out and not know what was going to happen. And I was excited and crazy things would happen or I'd get a number from a beautiful woman or I'd make out with her or go home with her or something like things that I'd never done before. Like those memories are priceless. And so reading back on this, when I teach this, it always brings me back to those days, like figuring this stuff out and learning it was one of the happiest moments of my life, happiest time periods of my life, like going out and experiencing this. So it actually gets a little boring later when you get good at this stuff so that's why i do a lot of things just to keep it exciting and fun for me so that's a very important rule that i learned that i have to teach everyone that whatever you're doing you got to figure out a way to keep it fresh and fun otherwise you're not going to want to keep doing it anyways that's opening i'm going to get into a couple parts of the opener now and kind of the the definitions of them and I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information because it's crazy how like one two sentences could be all this different all these different little pieces of the puzzle. But once you understand it, it's just super quick. But breaking them down sometimes take a minute. So uh, first off, we'll do the five ocean opener because I wrote it up. So hey, guys. So real quick, hey, guys. That's not hello. That's not excuse me. I'm saying hey. Hey is very casual. Guys, non-sexual. I'm not going hey, ladies. Hey, babe. Anything weird like that. If there's guys and girls... It works for all of them. Hey, guys. Simple. Second part, real quick. So 
I'll be honest. I really don't use time constraints because I've never needed to. Like it just wasn't something that ever was an issue for me, especially when I started out. It just never was an issue for me. I didn't ever really had anyone wonder or, or come across like they wanted to leave because I usually, it was either on or not. So if it was on, things were just great. But I definitely started seeing this when I started coaching students who didn't have the level of confidence I already had when I first got into this stuff. Because I'd already been married. I'd already been teaching for years. I was a great salesman and stuff. So I already had some natural confidence from that. So for the guys who don't convey a lot of that, or if you're not sure, just throw this next part in there because it's super simple. Real quick. Hey, guys, real quick. So, so real quick, false time constraint. Um, once you start going out a lot, or if you become a person of high value, if you go out with friends and you guys are having a fun event, or oh shit, one time I just went out, it was some of my, my buddies, my, my wingmen, we went out. And there was um, four of us. And some guy, random guy comes walking over. He's like, hey, guys, uh, so what are you guys up to tonight? We're like, oh, just having fun, man, talking to some girls, hanging out. Why? What are you up to? He's like, oh, I just found out my girlfriend was cheating on me. That fucking bitch. So I, I needed to come out tonight and get drunk, and I'm almost there. And I'm not exaggerating when I'm doing his voice. It literally was like that. It was a low-level energy, just depressing. And I felt it, like energetically. I just felt it. This guy's a Debbie Downer. This is what it's like to be a group of girls and have a, a guy come up who's like low energy. So that's another important lesson right there. You always want to come in like around the same or slightly higher energy. You don't want to come in too low because you're a Debbie Downer. You'll suck the energy from the group. And you don't want to come in too high because then you'll come in like a fucking spaz. And that's that's weird. So baseline or slightly higher. So anyways, this guy's talking to us and I'm like, I, I need to get away from this fucking guy. So I think uh, Gypsy was with me and I was like, hey, Gypsy, man, remember when with me and my ex split, you gave me some really good advice. You should give him that advice too. And I just walked away. <laughs> So, because I was like, I need to get out of here. I don't even think he knew why I did that. I think he actually thought I was trying to help. Um, but really, I was just trying to get out of there. So, yeah, I felt it. I had to get away. Now, that guy, if he had just came up to us with that energy and said, hey, guys, real quick, uh, I just got a question or something. I know personally I would have not wanted to run away right then. And this is what I was getting to a second ago. Once you start going out and start having some cool experiences, you'll start seeing things from the opposite perspective, which is something else I teach about the three perspectives you need to learn from. So the that, that false time constraint, if you aren't really bringing the heat yet, that can buy you a little bit more time. It can make them feel a little more comfortable. And then the other thing is, too, is you don't hover around like a weirdo for fucking 30 minutes. So anyways, hey, guys, real quick. I need your help to win a bar bet with my friend over there. So I need your help, okay, I need help. Now I could come off like you're trying to take value or trying to trying to suck some stuff from them, but it, it's followed up real quick. Hey guys, I need your help. Or hey guys, real quick, I need your help to win a bar bet with my friend over there. So especially nowadays with social media, everyone loves to feel like they helped, but they really don't want to do any work. They just want to share a post, share a GoFundMe link, or share a, oh, look at these poor puppy dogs. They want to share things, but not do anything. So this kind of almost plays into that. Like, hey guys, real quick, I need your help to win a bar bet with my friend over there. They're, they don't have to do much. It's a bar bet, real quick. His friend's over there. We're going to help him win a bar bet. Oh, I get to win. I get to be on the winning team. I get to help him win. I get to feel good. I get to feel good for helping him. It kind of plays into all that. So, hey guys, real quick, I need your help to win a bar bet with my friend over there. Can you name all the five oceans off the top of your head? So we used to just say, can you name all the oceans? But then people would argue about how many there are. So now I'm presupposing that there's five, which there are, but I'm putting that in their head if they didn't know it, that there's five. And then again, I didn't need, the, I didn't need this last part off the top of your head, but teaching throughout the years, what happened was a lot of students, I guess because the woman maybe wanted to get the interaction over with very quickly, would just pull out their phone right away and Google it. And then he would be like, oh, no, no, you can't Google it. And this goes back into the three level layers of resistance or three ways of dealing with resistance or friction, which I talked about before, and it was also on the website. But trying to deal with something 
after it happens is a lot harder than preemptively dealing with it. So we threw this in as a modifier. All these little pieces are little modifiers. So, hey, guys, that's a modifier. Real quick, that's a modifier. So off the top of your head, that's a modifier. So it's putting it in there, too, that the bet is off the top of your head. And then there's some follow-up if you need it. Sometimes they're like, that's a weird question. And you just own it. You're like, yeah, I know. It's like the weirdest question you'll probably get asked all night. But I still need your help to win. Or a lot of times they'll just go right into it and just start answering it. Other times they're, um, wait, why are you asking this? And you're like, oh, it's just a silly bar bet my friend and I have. Now you have to go a little bit deeper into the root. And I know other guys say maybe you should throw this whole root out there. I don't because 75 80% of the time I never have to get deeper with it. But sometimes you do. So if you have to, I just go, oh, well, it's, it was on are you smarter than a fifth grader or this is just something my friend and I do. And anytime I'm doing a one-on-one, that's what it is. This is a little bar bet my friend and I always do. And if I can find someone who looks like they can answer it, he'll buy me a drink. And you guys look like the smartest people here. So now you get to play into their ego a little bit. And uh, now they, if they don't know it, maybe they're not as smart as you thought. And now they want to prove it. So anyways, there's some fun stuff there. I don't want to get too much in the psychology behind it. But that's why it's such a simple, great one. Because it's just so, so quick, so easy. And then it's, you just have to remember five things. So really, really like it. If the guys need it, if the students need it, we go and they need indirect, that's the one I use. Now, like I said earlier, I prefer direct. I prefer improv, spontaneous, because I can pull it off. I can make it work. If you're not at that point yet, go in with a game plan and don't just think about the next step. Here's here's a line I always talk about from my tactical training. Amateurs think about the next step. Professionals think about like the next 10 steps. So try to be 10 steps ahead. But at the beginning, especially if your first homework assignment that I gave you was just going out and cold approaching 20 sets uh, in, in seven days, and it, obviously don't just do it all in one night, spread it out throughout the week, just like if you're trying to lose weight and you're on a diet, you can't just eat healthy for one day out of the week and expect to lose weight. It needs to be your average. It needs to be your default. The majority of the week, you need to be eating healthy. And then the more of the week that you eat healthy, the more weight you'll lose. And then if you want to take it up a level, now you do training, you'll lose even more weight. So same thing with this. You can't just be social one night a week, which is, I understand, I'm an introvert too. So it's hard sometimes, but you got to force yourself to do it. Force yourself to get out of the house, spread it out. So three to four nights a week, three to four days, whatever, day, night game, whatever you want to do, go out and be social. Get, get that to be your default, and then you'll be in the zone a lot faster and a lot easier, and then this all becomes a lot a lot more fun and a lot simpler to get into state and, and make this work. So the other thing is with indirect, <clears throat> that's a very, very important aspect or facet of it, which I explained in the blog post, but I'll go over again real quick in case you're just listening to this, is when I go indirect, I mean, you guys heard me using that opener. Hey guys, real quick, I need your help to win a barbell with my friend over there. Can you guys name all five oceans off the top of your head? You can tell that I have that in my brain. It's in my, it's in my memory bank. So, I go out and say it. I practice it a whole bunch. <clears throat> You'll start developing or recognizing, I should say, patterns. Patterns will develop. People res- will respond certain ways. Guys will respond certain ways. Women will generally respond. Older women, younger women, they'll kind of respond in different ways. Sometimes it's pretty similar. Sometimes it's almost the same. Sometimes it is the same. Sometimes it's totally different. You'll start recognizing patterns. Um, what I notice is people usually go Atlantic, Pacific. Sometimes they'll get Indian. Sometimes they get Arctic, but no one gets the fifth ocean. So not to jump ahead because maybe this will all cover on the next podcast. But I'm then thinking about the next step, which is my transition, which to me, I got to be honest, was the hardest thing that I had to learn and get over was transitioning. Because I was like, I can open, but then what? What do I do next? Well, that's where a transition comes in. And there's different types of transitions. There's three types, and we break that all down. And I hope you come up with your own so you're not just copying my shit. So that way they come off as totally congruent with you, and they just smoothly sail out. And it's pretty cool. But And I call it all conversation steering. But with going indirect with a canned opener, what's very beneficial with that is once you have it in your memory banks, once it's in the subconscious of your brain, which just means you can basically perform it without conscious thought. You can just say it without really having to think too much about it. I then can use that that 
extra CPU power, that extra brain space for other things that I need to work on. Because when I got into pickup, I realized, oh, it wasn't just openers and, and, and kiss closes and number closes and shit. I was like, I actually got to work on fucking lots of stuff. Like my hand gestures, horrible. My eye contact, not too good. I, with all my tactical training and martial arts training, I came off as pretty uh, intense, I should say. Never clicked in my head when I had all my friends growing up going, and everyone used to just call me by my last name, Grush. They're like, hey, Grush, are you okay, man? I'm like, yeah, I'm having fun. Why? Oh, it looks like you want to punch someone. Yeah, I heard that a whole bunch. Never fucking clicked in my head that, hey, maybe that's not the most uh, inviting <laughs> facial expression I should have when women are around or when I'm single and trying to talk to them. Maybe I should work on that. Never clicked in my head until I got into pickup, until I read about all this stuff. Body language, body posture, um, focusing the energy on the group, different moving to different people, engaging people. Oh, I'm losing this person. Oh, this girl's the, the mother hen of the group. I need, I need to talk to her for a bit. Hey, there's some guys in the group. I need to talk to them first to show them I'm not being disrespectful. Because that's another big thing. A lot of guys are scared about talking, opening sets with guys in them. It's great. It's easy. And I, I, I've heard, oh, you just treat the guys like ugly girls. No, I go in and fucking treat the guys like guys. I'll, I'll even overestimate their abilities. Like one guy with like three girls. I'm like, holy shit, man, you're a fucking badass. You got three hot chicks here with you. Like I was out with my friends, but fuck them. I needed to sit here and take notes from you. I got to figure out what you're doing right. And then now I'm stroking the guy's ego a little bit. And he goes, oh, no, man, this is my sister and this is her friend and this is my girlfriend. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool that you hang out with your sister. And then boom, I just transition off of that. So there's different ways of playing it, but if there's guys, I have no, no problem with that. You just figure out a way to handle it. If there's... A big group, it's actually easier. Because if it's two people, only two women, or a guy and a girl, and you open them and you try to kind of have a conversation with one person, well, now the other person feels left out. You need to have a wing or something to occupy that other person. So a three-set, four-set, five-set, big table of 12 people, 15, I think, once was my biggest when I was first starting out. Like That was great. I actually visualized it. As I talked to the one girl at the corner near the table next to us, I was like, hey, I'm hearing impaired. Get a little closer. She scoots her chair out, gets close to me. We start talking. The rest of the table, it's almost like a self-healing membrane. It kind of just sealed back up. And the guys and people that were around her saw that she was just sitting right next to me, which is feet from their table. So everyone felt fine. I think later when I asked her, I was like, oh, hey, did anyone think that was weird or anything? They go, oh, no, we, they all just thought we knew each other already. And then I realized how many times that happened to us before where we go out, talk a group of people, work events, something. All of a sudden, two people want someone you know and someone you don't know start having a really positive interaction. You can't hear what's going on. You start putting the pieces together in your head and making assumptions off of the information that you've gathered off of and you compare it to previous patterns you've observed. So you go, oh, maybe this person's uh, uh, an ex-boyfriend, an ex-girlfriend, a coworker. Uh, a relative or something. So you'll you'll start seeing that and you'll be able to read situations pretty accurately. But you'll just make assumptions. And then later, you're like, oh, who was that? And they're like, oh, yeah, that was my friend. I went to college with them or something. And that a lot of times they haven't seen them for years. I mean, maybe some of this is going over your guys' head. But just if two people haven't seen each other for a while and all of a sudden one of your friends is out and they see someone and they go, oh, my God. And they both do this big over-exaggerated hand and facial gesture and, oh, my God, and run up and embrace each other. Well, what does that tell us? Well, they, they were good friends or they were very close and they haven't seen each other probably in a while. And they're shocked that they ran into each other here. So, oh, my God, that's the girl. That was like my sorority sister that I, I went to college with in Florida. And she bumped into her bar in a bar here in Tempe or Scottsdale. So... That's the kind of stuff that happens. So anyways, I don't really worry about that. Um, root, false time constraint, modifiers, single set, which is pretty funny. We had Mystery at one of our seminars talk about that, and he called it cryo game. And he was like, that's the coldest there is, cold approach. And I was in back, and I think I was back there with Gypsy and a couple other guys, and we kind of chuckled because I'm like, I think he just made that term up. Like we've never, I've never heard anyone ever say that before. And it's a good term. It was, I'm not ragging on it at all, but it was just kind of funny. And then later uh, with some of the style life marketing they were doing, they actually put in it like mysteries never before revealed cryo game. And when I saw that on a sales page, I started laughing because I was there for that. But 
It's really just a single set. <laughs> That's all it is. So if you think about it too, a girl who's out by herself at the bar. Let's play a little. Put our Sherlock Holmes hat on. They're either out by themselves because they're that type of person, um, or something happened where they needed to get out and get a drink, or they're waiting for someone, or they're with someone and they maybe they just went to the restroom and they're waiting for them to come back. So take that information into account. Play with it. I've had it a few times where I'm at the bar with some friends or at a restaurant and I see a girl waiting by herself. I think one of the junior coaches with the old company, I don't want to keep mentioning Style Life, but one of the junior coaches wrote a field report about this where he goes, oh, um, we, he took me to this really cool tequila bar that literally that became one of my favorite day two spots, my date spots. And we were at the table talking and there was a girl that I had noticed that uh, she kept checking her phone, kept checking her phone. She's at the bar by herself. She had a drink. She was drinking real slowly. So I could tell she's waiting for someone. So a lot of times when I see that, and if we're at a table and we have extra seats, I'll go up to them. Or like I'll go up to the bar walking by and I go, are you waiting for someone? And they're like, yeah, my friend was supposed to be here like 20 minutes ago. 30, especially if they have like, uh, maybe if they're holding an extra chair or something. But this one was real busy. They're at the bar by themselves. Like, are you waiting for someone? And she goes, yeah, yeah, my friend. I've been sitting here. supposed to get here like 30 minutes ago. And I'll just throw it out there. I go, well, hey, I'm over here with my friends. And I know how bad that sucks. So if you want, come over here and hang out with us until your friend gets here. Like, we're cool, I promise. And I remember I threw it out the first time, and I was like, oh, I can't believe I'm going to say this. And I just did it, and it worked so well. I just used it from then on. Another little opener. Here's another hidden opener into this podcast. Um, if there's a group of girls at a table and there's an empty seat, because this happened to me where I walked up, grabbed the chair, and I needed it for our table. And I go, hey, uh, hey guys, real quick. And I leaned in on the chair, and I was leaning like over the chair towards the set. It was three women um, over the, over the chair. It was like a lot of energy. I was kind of leaning in a bit, and as soon as I started talking, I, I I didn't just feel it, but I actually saw them all kind of pull back a little bit. Like, what the fuck is this guy doing? I came in way too hard. But what had happened was I just went over, was going to grab the chair and pull it away because I knew they weren't using it. And then I was like, oh fuck, I should probably ask. So I leaned in. I kind of stopped myself from pulling and leaned in. And I went, hey guys, is, is this seat taken? And they all kind of were like, um, no. Like, and then I clicked in my head, fuck, I should have said, hey, cool if we bring this chair to our table. Because by me asking if the seat's taken, they all thought I wanted to sit there. And I go, hey, guys, real quick. Or I go, hey, guys, uh, is the seat taken? And they all go, uh, well. And I go, because we need it for our table over here. And I, I just saw all three of them, like the energies just went whoosh and just washed away. And they went, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, take it. And they all, it all clicked in their head all at the same time. They go, yeah, take it, help yourself. And then I, we all started kind of laughing, and I go, wait, you guys thought I was, I was coming over here to sit down with you? And they go, before they could even answer, I went, because I am. And I sat down, and I went, okay, where were we? Let's continue the conversation. They all just started laughing again. And then I realized later, when I broke that down and actually bumped it off some people's heads, that I did like a double state break. So they thought I was leaning in like the creepy guy. Then I go to take it away to my table, and then I actually sat down. And I was comparing that opener later with someone else. And they're like, oh, I just sit down and say, oh, sorry, I'm late. And that works. But someone else later was like, no, yours is better because it has some more playfulness, some more energy, some highs and lows and stuff. And it also, it's a little more indirect. Because if you get a bad reaction or they respond very negatively, you can just take the chair and go to your table. But also it's a time constraint because you're going to sit there for a few minutes. You got to get back to your friend. So. Anyways, that's another little fun one I play with. But again, first time it happened, it was improv. Now it's canned. And then it's situational. And originally it was spontaneous too. So um, two sets, mixed sets. Guys, we already talked about that. Amogs. I never really had any any trouble with that. I think I, uh, again, I think because of the energy I convey and who I am. Never really had any trouble with AMOGs. I had like drunk guys acting like dicks. But, again, because I train martial arts and stuff and I'm able to handle myself, that's never really been an issue. I've seen it with students, though, where it happens. Um, Bombay, one of our guys, one of the first guys we actually started going out with, he's like a little five-foot-tall Indian guy. He w- I had sent him into a set. He was talking to some girls, and I saw some like big dude come up next to him. It was who I think was friends with them, but I'm not 100 percent sure. And he like looked at the little guy like over top of him, like he looked down at him and looked at the rest of the people and everyone. He's kind of like, "What? The, who's this fucking guy here?" Well, we had another guy in our group at the time, Lux, and he's like, I think he played football for ASU. He was huge, huge, like 
280, 290, something like that. Six foot five, just a fucking giant dude. Gypsy, my old wingman, the story he has to say what Lux once wanted him to wing him, and he started walking. He's like, oh, no, I'm talking to someone. And, and Lux just grabbed him by the shoulders and picked him up and put him over like near him. He's like, no, wing me. He's like, okay. So big, strong guy. I see what's going on. I go, hey, Lux, go over there and uh, ask Bombay if he, if he needs another drink because you're getting one. So he goes right over. He pats him on the shoulder. He's like, hey, man, I'm getting a drink. You want one? I see the other guy stop. Like literally almost like a cartoon. Look at Lux and his eyes are like chest height on him and his head just kind of scrolls up until he sees the top of him and then he just turns and walks away. And then when Lux came back, because Bombay said he didn't need a drink, but Lux came back and he goes, why'd you have me go in there and do that? And I was like, wait, didn't you see that other guy there? And like no one else was really paying attention or saw that yet because it happened so fast and everyone else was talking to other people, but I saw it was like, boom, go in. And all it took was that wingman. Obviously it helped that he was huge, but just some other friends, other people there to help you out. But really, I think the other thing is, like I, I mentioned earlier when I was talking to the guy with the girls, I've always just gone in and just always stroked the guy's ego when I go into a set like that. So I think about it like prison, where as long as you don't disrespect anyone, you're not going to have any, any serious issues. Well, same thing here. I just always kind of felt like, and again, it's because martial arts training is like, I had so many interactions with like legit tough dudes that as long as you don't talk shit to them or make them feel like they need to check you, you're not going to get checked. And so, and I wasn't big back then. I think I was like 145 pounds, 150 pounds. In my, I'm bigger now, but yeah, I didn't look like this then. I wasn't nearly as tough as I am now. So yeah, I think it was just me going in and not being basically disrespectful which I see a lot of guys do that, man. They come in, and they just fucking are douchebags. And so then the guys got to, inst- the, the, the AMOGs in the group instantly go into, hey, this guy, like, it's, it's, it's tribal. It's like, hey, I don't know who this guy is. He's coming into my group. Like, I've got to protect him. I'm the protector. Or if the guy in the group's kind of a douchebag, he's like, oh, I got to go fuck with this guy now. So something it will trigger that. But I've just, I never really had that issue. I just come in, I'm, I'm fun. I talk to the guy. I'll assume the girls are his. I'll, I'll go, oh, man, your girlfriend. You have three girlfriends. You're like the fucking coolest guy I've ever met. Like, what guy's going to feel disrespected after that happens? And I've had that with one one girl uh, one girl in particular. The guy was right there, too. And I was like, man, you're, uh, your girlfriend's amazing. And he goes, thanks. And the girl looks at him and looks at me, and she goes, he's not my boyfriend. We're not dating. I think she might have said something like, I would never date him. He's my friend. And I went, ooh. And I looked at the guy, and I could tell like that, that hurt. That stung. And I was like, yeah, I, I feel that, bro. But even him, like I could tell he liked that girl. But now, what does he have to really be mad about? Because I was like, hey, it's your girlfriend. Like, I was being cool. I even did that once in line where I was waiting for a movie with some friends. My buddy, we had to wait in line, and my buddy had to go get a, um, a movie ticket. He had to go up to the will call. And I was talking to a group of people behind us. It was like three hot girls and like, two kind of nerdy guys or not one nerdy guy so i was talking to the girls for a little bit i mean my buddy had to go to the bathroom because i was there for a few minutes by myself but anyways I, I talked to the after i talked to all of them a little bit talked to the girls for a bit i then pulled the guy to the side and i was like hey man let me ask you a quick question i go which which girl's yours and he's like oh no no none of them they're all just my friends and i go okay i get that but like which which girl do you like the most because all three of them are fucking hot all three of them are cool as shit I'll hit on all of them. I'll hit on any of them. I don't care. But which one's the one you like? Which one's yours? And he's like, oh, it's so-and-so. And it was like the girl that was next to him. And uh, I go, okay, cool. And I'm not going to hit on her. So right there, like, even though he doesn't have a shot in the world getting with her, like, he's just got more respect and, and thoughtfulness from me, a stranger, than maybe anyone else who's ever had that in that type of situation before. And then later, actually, when we were kind of walking all in together, I think we were going to go see the room now that I think of it in LA before it got really popular. But anyways, um, then later when the, when the, um, kind of line started moving, he was kind of in the back of the line and two of the girls, one of them was that girl came up and they go, we heard what you said to him. And I went, what? And they go, we heard what you said to him. I go, I don't know what you're talking about. And they go, that was the nicest thing. Like that was so nice. Cause he's such a good guy. And the other girl goes, yeah. And I would never date him. <laughs> So she was letting me know, like, yeah, she was shitting on him. And I, again, I felt bad for the guy. And then I'll even do that sometimes. If I'm in set and that, those kind of moments happen, 
Like, I'll feel so bad. I'll empathize with the guy so much that, like, now I'm like, okay, I'm not going to hit on this girl because I feel too bad. Because that's cold that she did that. Anyways. Um, Amogs, yeah, we covered that. Openers. Five Oceans. Facebook Stalker, that's on the website. That was originally the MySpace Stalker. I use that on Hired Guns where I ask them the question, hey, guys, real quick, let me get your take on this. Works great for mixed sets. The other night, I was out at a restaurant. <clears throat> it was my friend's birthday. We're having fun. Bit, nice little group of us. And at the end of the night, I picked up the bill, and everyone was just giving me cash and stuff. So anyways, the waitress, I was flirting with her all night. And she was this really hot redhead. And you know how like redheads are really hot or they're really not? She was really hot. So I was flirting with her, and she was flirting back with me. And I almost went for her number, but I didn't. And I was thinking maybe she's just flirting back with me just to get a big tip. Anyways... I, had, uh, I paid, and I like I said, I used my credit card, and that's important because that night when I got home, later that night, she'd actually written my name off my credit card, looked me up on Facebook, and sent me a message. Now, I haven't responded yet, but I don't know if I should. What do you guys think? See, now in that opener, there's some pre-selection. I have DHV because I have friends. Uh, I'm kind of the leader because I'm the one taking care of the bill. There's little things being subcommunicated, and that, and that all really happened except for it was MySpace. That was all a real story. It was just MySpace instead of Facebook. And so I started using that as a test. Uh, a lot of times you can use a lot of these openers too, just as bar bets or little conversations later on. But I started using that, especially with mixed sets, because then the guys would respond and they're like, oh yeah, man, you should fucking message her. It's a home run. You can you can be fucking her tonight. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. It's kind of creepy. Because what if a guy did that to a girl and all the girls are like, yeah, I've had guys do that to me. And then boom, they start sharing their experiences. And so what happens which I didn't even plan this, uh, the guys basically blow themselves out because they're so, oh, yeah, man, you could fuck her. Oh, it's going to be great. And now all the girls in the group are like, what a, what a creep. And so, but I was being cool to him, so he doesn't he doesn't think I disrespected him. And then when I start talking to the girls about it, and I go, well, what if, what if the roles reverse? Like, has that ever happened to you? And almost every attractive woman has had this happen to him at least a few times. And one was like, Oh my God, one guy from class took my name off the roster sheet and looked me up and he told me that and blah, blah, blah. And they start just sharing all this shit with you. And I'm like, well, see, I don't know. I go, I, I'm a, I don't have that much trouble getting dates or anything. So it did seem a little weird. That's why I haven't responded yet. Cause I like meeting people face to face and like we are now like talking and getting to know each other. And so now you guys can imagine where that goes. So, Anyways, there was a couple little things that I got PMs specifically. Situational, observational versus immediate cold read versus opinion versus something else entirely. I think I covered that. It's the right move at the right time. Experience will teach you where to go on those. Um, but yeah, that's just to me, it's all direct, indirect. I'll, I'll go direct if I'm more on a time crunch or if I think they're on a time crunch. Like if I know they just got off work and they're like getting some food at Whole Foods or just got done and they got to let their dog out, something like that. Like especially when there's conversations and something like that comes out or uh, I, you almost start getting psychic with some of this shit. Like at Whole Foods, I would talk about that. I'd be like, oh, you probably have like a little dog and cold read and things like that happen. But anyways, if I know that they're, they're in a, in a rush or just in the morning. Let's say, forget all the, the woo, weird stuff, which it's not psychic. To me, I just, I think I recognize things and you kind of start reading people. And again, this is working at the gun shop for years. Like I could tell kind of right away, let's use really obvious examples, but some guys walk in that look like gangbangers. They're going to be more interested in like an AK. And then if an old lady walks in there, she's going to be interested in like a smaller gun that could fit in her purse. Like you just kind of start reading people. Same thing with cars, same thing with music. All that stuff. Food. You can guess what people are into. So, and the more you do this, the better you get at it. But anyways, the um, girl girl in the morning at the coffee shop, let's say, or she's walking out, or the girl at Subway. She was like in her work clothes. And I knew it was right around lunchtime when I left my place and I tried to hurry up and get there. And by the time we were done ordering, there's a big line outside. And we were on the edge of Koreatown. So there's a lot of big buildings there or medium-sized buildings. So anyways, all that putting two to two together, She's at work. She's on her lunch break. She's got to get her fucking food. And she wasn't eating it there. She's getting it to go 
to go back to work. So I got to move fast. So I had the amount of time to talk to her that we we're in line to make magic happen. Um, if you're walking into the bar and she's walking out with her friends and they're all going home, I might have three seconds to make something work. And I've done it. Wait, where are you going? I, I'm just getting here. I, I, where, are you, where are you heading out? She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I got to get going. I'm leaving with my friends. Or vice versa. I'm leaving. She's walking in. And I'm like, I was waiting for you all night. Where were you? She's like, oh, I'm sorry. We took so long. He. A lot of times they'll just joke back. And then I go, well, here, give me your number so I can call you and hit on you later. And I'm shocked at how many times they just go, okay, and give me their number. But right there, I mean, how much fucking faster can you get than that? So... I'm always observing. It's not situational versus observational um, because I'm always observing. And I think a lot of, I don't like, I, I do improv stuff, but again, going back to where a lot of new students have to start off with, they have to use more canned material until it, especially if they need to isolate other little things to work on. Like I talked about vocal projection, body language, all those things which I would go out literally each week and focus on one of those aspects. I'd use some cam material, do 20 cold approaches, and I'm just going to work on my body posture because I had a bad, like, I was hunching over a lot. So things like that. Anyways, what about Jim and the coffee shop? Jim's hard. Jim's hard. A lot of girls I know do not like fucking talking to anyone at the gym. If it is at the gym, and I was going to do it, which I don't go to the gym. I train martial arts to get my workout and stuff. I'm not a big gym guy. Um, but when I have done it or in similar situations, or if I was going to do it, I know when you start going there on certain days at certain times, you'll start recognizing faces. So it's kind of like hired gun game where you can do a slow burn, say hi. Next time you see them, you're like, you ask them a question about what you noticed last time. Maybe they're doing a workout. You work together, work near them, make a joke or a comment. But just throw and go when you have some time to work it. And don't get known as the creepy guy who hits on girls at the gym. Get known as the nice, positive, cool, social guy who talks to multiple people at the gym. Guys, girls, the staff. I did that once where um, I was hitting on the girl. The field report's on the forum. But was hitting on the girl at um, the grocery store. And I tried once back by like the milk. Then we were both in line together, and I tried to make small talk again. didn't work. And then I, I made a joke with the old cashier lady. And then as we were walking out, I kind of I, I got another thing so I could let, I let the girl get cuts. And then, boom, I paid real quick, walked out. She was walking out at the same, almost the same time. It's 11 o'clock at night, dark parking lot. And I go, hey, real quick, are you in a rush? And she goes, why? And I go, because I want to hit on you. And she laughed, and then we actually started talking, and all the details are on the forum. But anyways, later... And when I asked her, I was like, how come you finally were receptive to me, like talking to you? And I just tried small talk twice. It wasn't weird or anything or awkward. It was just two little things. But she was so hot. Like, I just got butterflies in my stomach. So I was like, I got to I gotta do something or at least try. So she specifically said later, she's like, well, she was sick. And I didn't even realize that she had like fucking NyQuil and DayQuil in, the, in her uh, shopping cart or her little hand cart. So bad observational skills on me. Um, but I guess it still works, so no big deal. But anyways, um, she goes, yeah, the first two times, like, I just, I, it was like, I wasn't in a talking mood. I just got off work. I'm not feeling well. She goes, but when I saw you joking around with the ch old checkout lady, that's when I knew, oh, he's just like that friendly social guy. So that's when she was then disarmed and felt comfortable talking to me. So that right there, you walk in, you know the front desk people. You might not think much about it, but other people who are seeing it, now see that you have a positive interaction with them, that can really set the stage. So things like that, start stacking things in your favor. And then the other thing I would try to do is I would try to hit on them when you're going, walking into the gym or walking out together. Not really on the floor when you're working out together because now that it's gonna be uncomfortable. Other, there's an audience, other people are gonna see it. Um, if it doesn't go well, now she's gonna sit there and work out for like another 40 minutes nearby you. I would just do it, and, and realistically, I would try to do it as I'm leaving. So I'm heading out and either say something to her then or we're walking out kind of together and then real low pressure real low key stuff like one of my places here is this cool little bar that has um, some retro arcade games and i just might ask her a question i'm like hey have you heard of this place yet 
And she's like, no, why? And I go, oh, I went there the other night. It was fucking awesome. They have like old 80s video games and really cool bar. You should check it out. And I go, oh, you know what? Here, if you want, give me your number. We'll grab a drink sometime. Just low key, low pressure. That, that's how I would do it. Coffee shop, similar thing. Because there's a lot of people around. I mean, if you can do it and you have the balls, walk up, go direct. Hit on her. Statement of intent. I like, but you got you to gotta worry about the environment. I don't like doing it where everyone else can hear what's going on because now she's going to feel all that pressure. So I still like things low key. And then if it is, maybe I'm still hanging out there. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I hit on her as I'm walking out. Um, otherwise, maybe I'm there doing my own thing and I have my, my headset on or my iPad. I'm doing some work. And then I get up to do something. I walk by and I'm just making a, makes a, an observation about something. And I'll do straight, like total straight man intent right off the bat. I'll look at her and I'm like, wow, just for the record, like you're like the most beautiful girl like I've ever seen in my life. Or you're like one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Like looking at you, you literally gave me butterflies in my stomach. And I just throw it and walk away. And then if they respond positively, which obviously I'm going direct, if they respond positively at all, then I, I it's almost in my head, almost like I'm throwing my casting line out there. I kind of reel it back in and I'll turn back to them and start talking to them. Other times I'll say something like that and I just go back and sit down and then, or do whatever I was doing. Same big thing at the bar too. And then again, later when I get up to go get another drink or I'm doing something else, I walk by and if they give me a positive look or anything like that, I'll go, yeah, I don't know if that was too much, but I just saw you. I just had to say it. Um, but I didn't know if I made you feel uncomfortable or anything. And she's like, no, no, it was great. Oh, that made my night. Then boom, I'm in. Or if, if I start talking at all and she's cold, then I just, okay, cool. I head out. So I don't like putting myself in situations to where I want to feel uncomfortable or I want them to feel uncomfortable. And then we stay there afterwards. So just real light, keep it easy, especially nowadays with everyone having cameras and me too and stuff, just real low key stuff. I've even done it. I've been playing around with it now. We're all even jokingly tell the girl, I'm like, Hey, real quick, especially like me too and stuff. I was going to hit on you, but I don't know if that's okay. Like, is it cool if I hit on you? Cause you're like smoking and I can't even think straight. And I'll put that out there. And they're like, yeah, it's okay. I'm like, great. My buddy who's a hypnotist said that. He goes, I would start doing some of my shows if I was tired or something. I'd go, well, who's getting hypnotized tonight? And people would raise their hands. He's like, those are the people I'm working with. So I'm like, is it cool if I hit on you? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, good. I'm doing it. So um, confidence and fear. Tony Robbins' quote on that for me is, competence breeds confidence. So how do you get good at something? By doing it. How do you get confident in your abilities by doing it well? Fear. I don't really think of fear when I was doing this. I, I was, I was more fearful of where my life was going without learning this stuff. So fear never really came into it. I think there was anxiety, but the reframe I use for my guys, uh, again when we're doing one on ones and stuff, is the the visual uh, representation. I, I kind of paint this picture in their head is it's a big tree, a big oak tree and the the leaves and the branches are like outer game the roots are inner game which is more some more important people usually pick one well technically they're both and depending on the situation one could be more important than the other but other times the other one could so they're both important and then i think about anxiety and we could use fear too but let's just say anxiety i think of as anxiety as one of the tree one of the branches in the tree but it's like a dead branch that's like the bark is falling off and there's no leaves on it. It's all rotted and looks real creepy, like from like a, a scary movie kind of like thing. Like that's that branch. It's in the same tree. The rest of the tree, it's all healthy, green, big leaves, sun hitting it. Looks beautiful. Big, strong tree. But there's that dead branch on it. So that's anxiety. And if we think about it, excitement is very similar to anxiety, but anxiety is a negative emotion. Excitement is a positive one, but they're both pretty fucking similar. They're both, they're both branches on the same tree and they could even be like branches that split off and one dies and the other one's the positive one. So in my head, I was like, I just want to cut that negative branch off. So it doesn't infect the rest of the tree. So boom, anxiety has gone. And I've talked about this before and there's more about this on the website, but anxiety has gone. I don't want to fucking deal with it anymore. I have excitement. I get approach excitement. When I see a girl that makes me feel alive inside, because I'm so dead inside already, when I feel a girl that gives me butterflies in my stomach, 
I think of like that as like sonars, like I'm pinging off of her. Why the fuck would I run away from that? Why the fuck would I avoid that? When I get that feeling, I fucking, I go for it. Because that's, why are we here? If you're single and you're, you want a cool relationship and you want to connect with someone, then what the fuck are we doing? Like, that's what I want. <clears throat> My throat's getting pretty dry. So, what the fuck am I doing? If that's the girl that gives me that feeling, those butterflies in my stomach, I have to slow myself down. I just don't run over there. I have to control myself as I walk over there because I'm excited. I'm excited where this is going to go. What are the possible outcomes from an approach? That's one of the previous uh, podcasts and blog posts. So what could happen from this approach? That's what I get excited about. I'm either going to learn. I'm either going to be proud of myself for trying. I'm either going to learn something or... There's going to be a certain level of connection built. So why the fuck would I avoid that? Once that clicked in my head, pick up, approaching, all that got pretty easy. Um, I was asked about fashion and stuff. I'm not going to get into that. But really, you want to, you want to, what's the quote for work? Don't dress for the job you have. Dress for the job you want. I like that. But also, a, a real simple thing I just... Just on my Facebook page, I posted, and on Instagram, there's a video of the girls taking pictures, I think in the bathroom, where the girls pose and pose and pose, and they're trying to get all these pictures where the girl looks good. And so I was like, perfect example of online dating. This is the female mindset where they spend all this time to get one picture, and guys will spend no time trying to get a good picture. They're like, oh, these are the five shitty, least shitty pictures I have. Those are the ones I'm putting up. And that's their mindset. Whereas women are like, Oh, these are good, but I need better ones. So they go out and spend hours trying to get good ones. So same thing with makeup, with hair, with accessories, with fashion. If a woman spends all this fucking time and energy on it, it's okay for you to spend a little bit of time on it, like 5%, 10% on it, if she's really into it. Like, it'll really benefit you. So yes, as men, like fashion matters. Uh, a buddy, buddy of mine who was at a seminar I spoke at, Tanner, he did a great talk on this about how fashion is, oh, I forget his specific quote. Maybe I'll link to it in here. But I follow him on Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram page and look up who I follow, it's public. His name's Tanner. I think it's Tanner Guzzi is how it's pronounced. Um, talking about fashion, how important it is. And then he starts going through slides and showing like military officers, George Washington, all these people, kings. Like there's a reason. Celebrities, cool celebrities. There's a reason guys have a look. Think about Aquaman versus uh, George Clooney. George Clooney's in nice suits. Aquaman's dressing like how he dresses and has the tattoos and a scarf hanging off of them. Chicks like that. So if they're into something a whole bunch and they appreciate it, yeah, you should at least care about it a little bit. And I'm not really into fashion. I'm into more practical stuff. But even me, I care about how I look and how things fit on me and the clothes, if they fit well. And I wear the clothes. The clothes don't wear me. So, yeah, I care about it. I care about what I, what I wear and how it looks, but I also carry a firearm and other things, so I have to take that into consideration. But I know for a fact, like my old wingman, he was all about fashion, and chicks fucking loved it. So totally, if you're into it, go for it. If you're not, go out and get some help. Have girls help you. Have friends help you. Have the girls at the store help you. That's their job. They love doing it. So anyways, we're about an hour and 15 minutes. I wanted this one to be really full of substance for you guys, almost like I was just doing a, a coaching call so this will be up on the website it'll be on youtube I'm, I'm trying to get more of these like in the bank before i put them on uh, actually podcast hosting uh site which actually i've googled that i've never done it before so if any of you guys have done it i think there's a couple of you i know of who've done it um and maybe i'll reach out to you too but if anyone hears this they have some advice or tips and it's close to the date like if you listen to this three years from now i don't need the advice i probably figured it out but yeah send me an email and uh, I'd appreciate some insight. Let me know with this microphone, how it sounded. Let me know if you appreciated this or if, you, if it helped you. Um, yeah, share it if you want. It's totally cool. This is like open out their information. And I hope it helps you. This is the stuff. Basically, this is the shit that I wish I could have had someone there to help me when I first started out. Now, it was fun figuring things out like how I did. But if I would have had like a mentor or someone to guide me, which I looked for them, they just didn't exist yet. There's only a couple of them. And they were all, it was, you had to go to a boot camp. And most of them were guys I didn't want to really associate myself with. 
but like locally and, and on the internet, it wasn't like it is nowadays. So trying to find someone who could help me just didn't exist. So I had to go out like, I always tell guys, I was like literally stumbling around in the dark, looking for the keyhole or looking for the doorknob in a dark room that I'd never been in before and didn't know how big it was. Like, that's pretty hard to do. But if I just would have had some help or some mentorship or some advice, like I could have stuff that took me weeks or months to figure out or even some of the shit like years. Someone could have just told me it would have clicked in my head instantly and I could have hit the ground running. So that was kind of the big thing I wanted to do with putting these out here is, and I also know too, like some of the stuff, like the one-on-ones with me are pretty expensive. So some of the guys who can't afford it, I still want you guys to be able to get some help. So let me know if this helped you. Um, if you guys have anything you want to add or insight or feedback or openers that you like, put those down in the comments on the on my blog. So stephengrush.com, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-G-R-O-S-C-H. You guys probably uh, found this somehow, so it should be on my YouTube channel or anything, but it should link back. But please put it up as a comment. Like We have a Facebook group too, which if you want, message me either on Facebook or email me and we can get you in that. And if you guys have good stuff to share, like let's help our, I have a nice little community of guys there. Let's all help each other. Let's all level up um, things that you guys learned or have questions about. Maybe other people can benefit from it or help you with your questions. So don't be shy. If you guys uh, listen to this, enjoy it, like step up, be part of it, or at least go out and fucking use this stuff. And like I said, too, let me, know, let me know if you enjoyed this because this is a bit of work. So if I get positive feedback, or if I get feedback from you guys, A, I can make it better, but B, it makes me more likely to do more. So if you guys dug this, let me know. Even if you want to do it privately, I totally understand. But at least let me know if this stuff helps you out. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.